Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. You may not know it, but Charlotte, North Carolina is one of the wealthiest cities in the nation on a per capita basis. It's the largest banking center in the United States outside of New York City. It's growing super fast and lots of affluent people are flocking to the area to escape whatever cold hellhole they made their home for the longest time. You could drive all over Charlotte and find wealthy, safe neighborhoods. But the wealthiest part of the Charlotte metro area is in a section on the northern fringes of town surrounding a large man-made lake called Lake Norman. Just about everyone who lives in this part of the metro area is well off. Most are at least upper middle class. Many are multi-multi-millionaires. For this drive, I toured a community on the southern edge of Lake Norman, a place called Cornelius. You probably haven't even heard of it before. A lot of people in North Carolina haven't even heard of this place. And you can understand why. I mean, there's no reason to be here unless you live here. But man, some of the neighborhoods I toured here were just fantastic. Very impressive. In a little bit, we're going to be joined by a real estate agent who lives in the area and knows Cornelius well. But for now, I'll set the tone. Let's begin with, you can't afford it here. There's a really good chance you'll never be able to afford to live along the banks of Lake Norman. Heck, even somewhat wealthy families can't buy a home here anymore. The average cost of a home in Cornelius is about $450,000, but those include many of the regular homes that are not along the banks of this lake. There's about 30,000 people here total, but only a few hundred dot the landscape we're currently touring. If you look at a map of homes that have sold recently, you'll see that every single one of them is at least $1.5 million. Look at that map. All of them are more than a million dollar homes. The ultra rich in Cornelius make $800,000 a year on average. That's not even doctor or lawyer money. That's CEO, professional athlete, old money. These people live a lifestyle you will likely never experience. And what's interesting is many of the homes looked empty as if they're only a second or a third home. To say it's conservative here is an understatement. The people who live in these homes have lake access. Many have fancy boats to go along with their brand new SUVs. They golf and frolic. They buy their clothes at overpriced shops and they dine at super fancy restaurants. Even their dog park has a damn bar in it. Summers here are an elite rendezvous. It's very safe here, and many of the kids who live here go to the best schools. This whole region north of Charlotte's just loaded. It's North Carolina's version of Orange County or the Hamptons. Davidson, Mooresville, Kannapolis, Huntersville, Concord. It's a bunch of Karens and a bunch of Kyles. But the richest of the rich live here in Cornelius, a small town that's pretty much unknown among most Americans, wouldn't you say? Now that's what I'm talking about. I can get used to this. Karen, you drive a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. You ain't fitting in here, woman. <laughs> Mappy looks nervous. I think he agrees. Beth. Okay, so everybody joining me right now is Beth Graken. She's a realtor with Lake Norman Mike out there in the Charlotte area around Lake Norman. How are you, Beth? I'm great. How are you doing, Nick? I'm good. So um, I drove around the area around Lake Norman. You know, a lot of people say that that's like the fanciest part of the Charlotte metro area. There's big giant homes up there. They're really beautiful houses. And um, I wanted to just kind of show people what it's like in, in some of the richest neighborhoods in the state of North Carolina and get some perspective from you because you've been a, a real estate agent there for a while now. Yes. Um, yeah, there are some big, massive homes on the Lake Norman area, mostly in the southern part. Cornelius uh, will probably boast the most expensive and largest homes in the area of the whole lake. So it's pretty amazing. So can you talk a little bit about this area? Like when did it get so fancy up here? When was it just little small lake homes and then it became like giant mansions that are probably too big for an average family? Yeah. So years ago when they created the lake, uh, there was just a bunch of little lake cottages around. And this was considered way out from Charlotte. And people did not come here for the lake life. It was just too far away. But 
as things have progressed, and I think more so baby boomers and, and things like that, it's changed. People retiring, uh, they started buying up these little ranchers and just bulldozing them and building their huge 8, 10, 12,000 square foot plus homes. And it, it's just amazing to see how that has happened. What, what was just used to be a uh, just little ranch homes on the lake are now two, three, four, six, eight million dollar homes. Yeah. When did, how old are most of the homes on the side in Cornelius right along the lake where I, where I'm showing right now? A lot of them were built in the nineties. The mega mansions, as we call them, a lot of them were, they came up in the nineties. And then now people are just buying the little cottages that were there. They're buying them up, bulldozing them and then building again. So there's still a, a few that are out there. But uh, it, they're few. I know. It, it's like uh, every now and then you'd see like a little teeny house with like a big, giant, majestic yard uh, and a, a huge lake view. And it's like that person's holding out. Uh, we have that out here in North Carolina on the coast, too. There'll be like big, beautiful houses around the coast. And then there'll be like trailer parks or like mm -hmm. just one trailer that's sitting mm -hmm. on probably like a five million dollar square uh, lot of land. And it's like yeah. somebody's sitting on a lot of money right now. Right. And I try to explain that to our people that come in from out of state, that the land is worth more than the house and that we put the value on the land first and then back out and put the value on the house. So. What's the average cost of those homes that are on the south end in Cornelius? Oh, gosh, the average. Well, I know that you cannot touch anything on the water that's decent for under $2 million. And then still they're going to need fixed up and because a lot of them are dated. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't imagine being so wealthy to be show up and buy a $2 million house and then tear it all down and redo the inside. That would be <laughs> must be a nice life for these people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know there's a lot of NASCAR drivers that live in the area. Charlotte's the hub, uh, the the headquarters of NASCAR, and a lot of drivers um, own some of these homes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who they else? Do. Yeah. Like, is it doctors, lawyers, um, anesthesiologists? Like, who who can afford these homes? I find it's a lot of business owners because you know we are we have more Fortune 500 companies in the Charlotte area than any other place in the country. And so we will have presidents of companies, CEOs of companies, CFOs uh, of NASCAR, of course, huge NASCAR presence. And just the list goes on. People who have sold their corporations or their companies for multiple millions of dollars. And they're like, OK, we're out and we're going to spend the rest of our days in the Lake Norman area and on the golf course. Yeah. Is it so is that area well known among the the um, economically, the economically elite among uh, those people like Lake Norman's one of the places that you could go to if you want to have a big fancy house on the lake. Um, is that kind of how it is right now? Yeah, a lot of people sit there and and seek out best places to live, but for retirement, things like that, because most of the people that I work with are at that retirement stage or getting close to it. And so they're ready to make their next move and and get that all planned out. So <laughs> it's just crazy the influx of people from out of state that are coming here and looking for that um vacation area. And, and Lake Norman has so much to offer as far as restaurants on the lake and just places to go and hang out on the water. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. What's a, so I, I saw some fancy shopping. Um, you know, clearly there's a lake that you can have a boat on. Um, that whole area just seems to be like just oozing in elite and status and, and fancy and everything. Yeah, and I think that's just more the south part of the lake and the eastern side. So you'll get more of that from Cornelius and Mooresville. The western side of the lake is a little laid back, not so congested, still affordable, which is really nice. Although people are finding it out as well, and those prices are starting to increase also, making it a little more out of reach for people who had, you know, say under a $1.5 million budget. Yeah, so affordable on Lake Norman is 1.5 million. Is that what you're saying? Uh, and that would be depending on the side of the lake that you're on. Yeah. 
that, so that would be considered affordable. Under three million in Cornelius would be considered <laughs> affordable. Oh God, it's got to be the top ten in the country for expensive zip codes for homes or, or income or something. Cornelius is the most expensive zip code on the lake, and there is such a massive concentration of very wealthy people in Cornelius. And thankfully, I've had the privilege of working with many of them, and they are just amazing and a blast to work with. Yeah, I'd be in a good mood, too, if I had like $20 million to spend on uh, homes and boats. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So um, a lot of the homes looked like they're not even occupied for full for the full year a lot of them seem to be like seasonal is that the case where you've got people that are not only wealthy enough to afford a two and three million dollar home but that's not even their permanent residence right we do there's a bunch of people that have it here for six months of the year and they come up and a lot of them are from florida we have a lot of what we call halfbackers they were from the northeast or the north and they move down to florida it's too hot in the summer they move halfway back and uh, so we have a bunch of halfbackers that own another property here on the on the lake yeah i tell a lot of people that are thinking about moving to florida it's 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 had its day don't go down there now i, I tell a lot of people come to the carolinas and i have a lot of people that my neighbors and friends here that are like would you stop telling people to come here we have enough people coming here it's almost getting uh to the point that there's not going to be really any places that anybody can go uh, where there's not going to be too many people unless you want to go to Nebraska or Kansas or something. I know it, it's starting to feel like that here too, because, you know, we had over a million people or about a million people move to the state last year. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, I think in Raleigh, there's like 17 people a day moving to Raleigh right now. Golly. I know. I know that our metro area grows by about a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, a thousand people a month. And Cornelius is a place a lot of people haven't even heard of. It's 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 a small, it's a Charlotte suburb, what, 30,000, 20,000 people? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, the beauty about Cornelius is people that are still working or now they've moved their company to the area, it's a quick hop onto 77 onto the highway for them to get to uptown to get to their offices and and to the airport and that's mm-hmm. a lot that's a lot of uh the draw for cornelius mm-hmm. yeah it's what 30 minutes well i would say normally it'd be 30 minutes but charlotte's traffic is getting pretty bad i mean they're, they're widening roads but man uh i very rarely see traffic anymore and i drive a lot um <laughs> because covid i think a lot of people's work habits have shifted um, and, and so Atlanta is absolutely terrible. Charlotte mm-hmm. is still is bad still. New York City has traffic, but, you know, in all the places that I've driven to along the East Coast, um, and I haven't been down to Florida in a long time, Charlotte actually kind of had a little bit of, tra- of a traffic problem, which I was surprised by. They have a huge traffic problem, and they put in a toll road, which has not alleviated the problem at all. So mm. it's like, darn it. And mm-hmm. we have we have growth pains here because there are roads that need to be widened all around the lake. We have very limited access from the east side of the lake to the west side of the lake. There's only a few few places where you can cross over. Mm-hmm. What is it about? Congestion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's what is it about Charlotte that's, you know, the banking hub, lots of jobs, climate. I, is there any other reason why Charlotte's growing so fast right now? You know, I just think it's that ideal situation as far as climate, because you can be here, you still get four seasons, but that fourth season is so short. I know that's one of the reasons I came here, because I just dislike winter so much. And if we get winter, it it might snow in the afternoon and be gone in the evening. Or, you know, it's just... It's so much nicer. It is. It's a sunny. I mean, there's a lot of places, you know, you get in the Sun Belt, they call that for a reason because the sun's out for a lot of the winter. It can get chilly, but, you know, I don't mind 40 degrees um, in February as long as the sun's out. I mean, who complains yeah. about that? Well, the other beautiful thing about the Charlotte location and metro area is where we're located, we are three hours to putting your toes in the sand at the ocean and we're two hours to the mountains. So if you want to go skiing, you you're right there. I mean, it's such an ideal location, and that's probably a lot of the draw too. Mm-hmm. Are there any downsides besides your mortgage of living in Cornelius? I mean, every every place can't be perfect. It looks from the outside to be a perfect place to live, 
are, what would be like a negative to, to living there? Um, is there one? Probably just just the traffic. Yeah. I can't think of a negative to live in Cornelius. It's it is such a pleasant area, and I love I love the area. Mm hmm. Yeah. Too many rich people bumping bumpers out, out on uh, <laughs> the side roads. So give people an idea. Okay. So let's just say uh, I was going to buy a $2 million home in Cornelius right along the lake. And that would probably be like a major fixer upper. Mm -hmm. What would my income have to be if I was going to buy a $2 million home? And I know I'm putting you on the spot right now, but like average wise, what would I have to earn annually to be able to afford a Well, you're, up? you're, to put yourself in a good position, I would want to make sure my debt to income or DTI is around 30 to 40 percent. So you, you're going to have to do the math on that for your own income and and see if you fit into that kind of criteria. Yeah. So if I made let's say I made 250K a year, could I afford uh, would I be qualified? Do you think if I had decent credit uh, and I had 10 percent to put down, what, do you think I'd get a loan for a two million dollar home? No. Oh, I, don't I don't think so, but I'm not a lender. I'm not yeah. a lender, Yeah, and, I know. <laughs> but I know what I can afford and I know what I make. So um, that would be, no. Mm -mm. Oh, I, yeah. It, I guess if you were completely debt free and all you had was a house payment. So, I mean, I'm thinking a, just 20% down on a $2 million home is going to be about an $8,000 payment. 8,000 a month. I would think so. I mean, it yeah. it's probably very tangible for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, then property taxes and all the other stuff too. Yeah, are, and are, are they high? They're not high in North Carolina. Well, not in North Carolina per se. You know, when you go, when you come from Connecticut and New York and Illinois, things like that, those taxes are outrageous. I have clients that have told me uh, he had bought a, a million dollar plus home on the lake. And I told him what his taxes were going to be. And he says, wow. I just got a $35,000 a year raise because his taxes were that much more in Connecticut than they were here. I know it's crazy how, I mean, that's part of the reason. And you know, a lot of people here in the Carolinas say, don't change it. Like we got a good thing going. Don't come down here and vote in more taxes. Cause a lot of people out the Northeast like to complain about the taxes, but then they vote for them, which is, I, I just don't understand why you would vote yourself into, into a high tax rate and then complain about it. Like, for years and years, but that's what they do. <laughs> they do. They do. And and I do hear that a lot. And people will have signs up, you know, around the lake, you know, voicing their little opinion about that kind of thing. But, you know, that freedom of speech and that's what we have in this country. So. Well, thank you, Beth Kraken uh, with uh, Lake Norman Mike. I appreciate your insight into what it's like to, to live and what the uh, what it's like to buy a home up in that area. It seems like a really pretty place that a lot of people hadn't heard of. And I wanted to show a lot of people, um, this is what one of the fanciest neighborhoods in the state of North Carolina looks like. This is one of the, gotta be Charlotte's fanciest neighborhood. And, oh, uh, definitely. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Lake life is something to be just basked in. And that's what you come here for. You come here for the lake life, the relaxation, the uh, being able to just zone out from a crazy work day, that kind of thing. And maybe even bumping into Dale Jr. at Bojangles. You never know. <laughs> you don't ever know. I mean, and he's such a for real kind of guy. I remember a couple years ago, uh, they were, and he lives in Mooresville, and they were doing a little Halloween thing in in downtown Mooresville and the businesses were giving out candy and this little boy was walking right in front of him and his wife and their kids. And he had on his little Dale jr. Race outfit. And so this little boy is dressed up as Dale jr. And doesn't even know that he's right behind him getting trick or treat candy. Uh, did, did, did he, did they get to shake hands finally? Well, they didn't show any more of the video, so oh, that's all I got sure. to see. And it was just such a sweet moment, you know, that, you know, here he is out with the masses, trick-or-treating with his kids, just for real. Yeah. I think NASCAR drivers are way more down to earth than most pro athletes. That's my opinion. They are down to earth. They really are. There's fun. The race industry is a really neat industry around here. Yeah. Anybody that sticks in a chew and drinks uh, domestic beer is okay with me. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun chatting with you. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Well, you have a wonderful day. You too. All right. Thanks. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.